Okay, so a ton of you have requested that I explain Kissland by the weekend. And if you're one of those people who wanted me to do it, you probably came when I explained the entire Starboy album song by song. Now, I'm probably not going to go back and explain every song from Kissland, but I did want to explain the title track, uh, and maybe we'll get into some more, you know, later, depending on how you guys like this video. Though you should know that I'm also putting out, or have put out, 28 by the weekend. All right, so we're going to explain Kissland today, and it is kind of deep, actually. If you listen to the first, like, three quarters of it, or seven eighths, you might not agree but then you get to the last stanza or so and it, it he kind of flips it on its head and makes you really think and have a deep question moment. Let me explain. Hey everybody, my name is Clifford Stemmy and I'm the Pop Song Professor. Welcome to my channel where we're all about helping music lovers like you to understand the deeper meanings of popular songs so that you know what your artists are saying and can enjoy your music more. Today we're talking about Kissland by The Weeknd. Now, a lot of you guys came to this channel because I explained the entire Starboy album. And a lot of you wanted me to go back and do older songs by The Weeknd. I've already done a few, uh, but I wanted to get into Kissland because several people requested it. And it's also the title track for one of the most requested albums uh, that I get, Kissland. So yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, and we're going to kind of go stanza by stanza and see what The weekend reveals to us. And we find out from verse 1 that it's about a relationship. When I got on stage, so he's a singer, she w swore I was six feet tall, but when she put it in her mouth, she can't seem to reach my ball. So she, she sees him at a concert, she's excited about him, uh, they have sex, and he's claiming to have a big penis. He says, I'm faded off the wrong thing, the wrong thing, reference to his drug use and his relationship with drugs. And then he says... Uh, and I'll admit, baby, I'm a little camera shy, but exceptions can be made, baby, because you're too damn fly. Now, The weekend does, like, do very few interviews, and he really doesn't seem to be, like, to be seen in public or to let people in on his private life. So that's what that's a reference to. He tells her, you're like, you're not just a fan anymore. Like, we've got a thing uh, when he sings, for what it's worth, I hope you enjoy the show, because if you're back here only taking pictures, you're going to have to take your ass home. So, really, he's, he's saying, well, what comes next in the chorus, nothing is going to change my love for you. Oh, girl, don't hold back, let it out. Uh, and that's basically the entire chorus, basically saying, you know, like, we are in love, and this is supercharged, uh, and don't hold back when we're having sex. And then we get into verse 2, where he says, you can meet me in the room where the kisses ain't free. You gotta pay with your body. Not really into kisses leading into nothing. So, he doesn't want the foreplay to, to not result in sex. The kisses not being free are probably maybe a reference to his bedroom, uh, where something like that naturally leads to sex, so she wants kisses, he wants sex, something like that. And he doesn't promise her like a solid relationship, he just says, fuck around, turn you to my west coast girl. So when he's out on the west side of the, you know, the United States or Canada or whatever, uh, then he'll hang out with her uh, until they book a show in New York City. And then that leads to the bridge where he says, because the only thing you're taking is your clothes off. Go ahead, girl, strip it down, close your mouth. I just want to hear your body talk. After another chorus, like the tone of the music changes. It goes from sort of like like slinky, sexy music to, to high-pitched, intense, like energy-filled, strained music. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird, but it, it seems to me that it signals a change. You know, things were just kind of like, you know, I'm a R&B pop star and things are great, I'm sexy, and I'm getting everything that I want. And then it leads into something where it's like, you know, maybe things aren't all right where they should be. The, the lyrics don't represent that right away, but the music seems to be foreshadowing this change or this new perspective. Uh, he says, I got a brand new place. I think I've seen it twice a year. I can't remember how it looks inside. So you can picture how my life's been. He's done a lot of traveling, uh, especially after he's gotten famous. He says, been gone for so long, I might have just found God. Well, probably not if I keep my habits up. So he recognizes that he's living a lifestyle that God wouldn't approve of. He continues singing about drugs and having sex with women alcohol, weed, driving cars fast, several lines about oral sex and the certain things that he likes. With this one woman, I think. I think it's with that same woman from earlier. But the big difference is he's not talking to her directly. He's, he's referring to her as she in third person as opposed to how he was talking about her in second person. So maybe he's gone back to New York City and he's left, you know, his West Coast girl on the West Coast. And so this could be a different girl. Uh, or it could be that it's the same girl. It's just he's kind of that musical change has shifted and there's a change in the lyrics too where it's much less personal and that fits with what we see in the the final portion of the song uh in the outro and he says this ain't nothing to relate to even if you tried you tried you tried so it's almost like yeah you know she thought they had maybe a relationship he was talking to her in second person he switches it to third person to kind of emphasize that distance between them he talks about she you know to us uh, rather than just talking to her and telling her what to do so he's saying you tried to relate to me but this ain't nothing to relate to i'm a mess i do what i want i know a relationship with me isn't necessarily a good idea so it's that same sort of self-awareness that we see in a lot of the weekend's music where he'll sell 
celebrate like a crazy lifestyle and then he'll throw in just a couple of lines here and there that are kind of like, eh, I don't know, maybe this isn't such a good idea and I recognize that there's problems with it. Same with those lines about, you know, God. I mean, that's basically all for Kissland by the weekend. Uh, there are some specific cultural references and, and different things like that in there, but I wanted to give you guys the big picture perspective on what the song means as a whole, not only for us, but also for the weekend. And keep in mind, the weekend is a character that Abel Tesfe, the singer, uh, created to kind of work through some of these issues and thoughts and feelings. So not everything that the weekend does does Abel Tesfe do. Though I would guess that they're not too different. In any case, I hope you have a better understanding of Kissland. If that's something you're excited about, don't forget to join the song meaning community. Uh, check out some of my other explanations on this channel and comment below a song that you'd like to hear me explain in a future video. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.